Welcome back to the band guide where we use GarageBand to create professional sounding music. I'm your band guy, Colin, and today I want to show you three awesome free compressors from Analog Obsession. Why three compressors? Well, not all compressors are created equal. There's different types of compressors, and the different types of compressors have different tones, different characters, different things that they work particularly well on. And the better you understand that, the better you'll be able to harness the power of these compressors and start using them inside your mix to get more professional results. So last week we did a deep dive into all the components of a compressor and exactly how to set one, compression explained if you will. You can watch that video up here. We're not gonna go deep into those components today, so be sure to check that out. I also gave you a completely free compression cheat sheet that you can download from the link in the description below on this video that walks through everything you need to know about compression so you can really understand compression and how to set it. Now, that cheat sheet does not go in-depth into the compressors we're talking about today, but it will still really help you understand fundamentally what is in a compressor. Now, one cool thing about the different compressors that I'm gonna be showing you today is that they don't all look the same. They all have the same things going on behind the scenes in terms of they have an attack time, they have a release time, they have a ratio, they have a threshold, but not all of them actually allow you to manipulate and tweak those individual things, which can actually be good for you sometimes. There's some compressors I really like setting because they're really easy to set. But those compressors aren't necessarily the best on every single source, so we'll go over that in today's video as well. But let's go ahead and jump in and start looking at some free compressors. All right, I'm gonna talk about three types of compressors today. An optical compressor, a FET compressor, and a VCA compressor. We're gonna start with the optical compressor because it's super cool and it's super easy to use. An optical compressor in the real world would be a hardware unit that has literal tubes in it to determine how much compression is happening. So tubes like you'd have in a guitar amp are built into this style of compressor and depending on how hard the audio is hitting it determines how fast it engages and releases, how hard it compresses. So it's determined by the tubes. So what we're really doing when we're setting it is determining the threshold when the compressor will engage in terms of the volume of the audio and then we're setting the output gain to balance balance it back out. Now, because an optical compressor is using tubes, it gets a little bit of a warmth to it that you don't get with some of the other compressors. It also is really musical because it's a very natural interaction with a completely natural object. Now, we're emulating this, obviously, in a plugin. We're not building any sort of tubes in your computer. We're gonna be emulating it, but it still will get a very musical nature and a little bit of warmth to it as you use an optical compressor. So. The compressor we're talking about for the optical type is the LALA by Analog Obsession. Free compressor, it's really, really awesome. It's called an LALA. It's a play on the most famous type of op optical compressor in the real world, the LA2A. And there've been hundreds of emulations of this plugin. So this is just one of them, but this one is free. So I'm gonna recommend it. It also sounds really good. I think Analog Obsession does a great job making really good sounding plugins. Now, it's called an LALA. -LA. I like to call it the LALA. -LA. I don't know what Analog Obsession prefers, but we'll call it the LALA. -LA. This is the way this plugin looks, and it's a little bit different than the original hardware unit or other versions of these plugins. So let me show you another version of this plugin, the Waves CLA-2A. So this is an LA-2A. And this is the more traditional setup of it. It has a gain knob over here and a peak reduction knob over here. Now the peak reduction knob is your threshold. So that's how you're determining how much compression is happening. The gain knob, even though it's on the left, you'd think it would be input gain, but it's actually output gain. So after the compressor's turn down signal, we're using the gain knob over here to make that gain back up. Now the layout is a little bit different on the LALA. Uh, the knobs are just over here. And then he's built in a few other functions that are really cool and really powerful, but I'm gonna tell you right now, just ignore them. These other knobs make it look really complex, but it's actually a very simple plugin to set. These would be used in very few situations. They were not built into the original unit as we just saw on the LA2A, a more traditional version of that plugin. These were not built into that. So this is a great feature if you're really advanced and really using these plugins to tweak. Thank you, Analog Obsession, for including them. But I would encourage you to not worry about it at all right now. We're going to focus just on how you would traditionally set one of these LA2A style plugins. So because this compressor adds a little bit of warmth and is really musical and fairly transparent, it's really good on bass guitar, on vocals, on acoustic guitar. It can be good on drums, but 
because it's using tubes, it's usually a little bit slower. So it's not as good on things that are really transient heavy like drums that are really, really fast. There's other plugins that and compressors that are better for that. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But let's start by just going through this Lala really quickly on a bass guitar and we'll dial it in and I'll show you how quickly you can get this dialed in. So listening to this bass in solo, just for the sake of uh, seeing and hearing what it's doing. We use this peak reduction knob. As we turn it up, it will lower the threshold. Now typically you're going to be looking for somewhere in the ballpark of three to four decibels of gain reduction. If you want to go a little bit more extreme, you can go a little bit higher, but that is going to be turning it down even more. Uh, so be conscious of that because you don't want to completely flatten your audio, but that can be nice to get a little bit more of the character out. This part is a little bit more aggressive, so we'll be kind of in this four to five decibel range. And if we were to bypass this right now, it's a lot quieter, right? So we'll turn it back on and we'll use the output gain to add gain back in to make sure that it's loud enough leaving this plugin. This is also a bypass plugin button, by the way. So that sounds about the same volume, but notice how it's a little bit fuller in the low end and how little nuances don't get lost in this bass part. I'll play it again off and then turn it back on. So subtle, again, it's very transparent, very musical. It's a little bit slower in how it engages, but it helps bring out like the little palm muted parts as he's going into notes. Things that are a little bit more subtle just get brought out more when you reduce the dynamic range. And also with something like a bass guitar, it really helps because with bass, you want to have a nice consistent low end in your mix. You never want it to get too loud and overwhelm the song, but you also don't want it to get too quiet and feel really thin. So having a nice consistent bass is really, really helpful. Let's look at another example quickly on a lead vocal track. So again, I love the La La on a vocal track. It sounds really great. In this example here, we'll listen in solo and just listen to this lead vocal with and then without this on. And notice how when it's engaged, it's just a little bit warmer and a little bit more controlled. None of the words get lost. She said I love you, but she called me by another name. She said I love you. So listen in particular right on, around this word name, how you can hear it better with this compressor on. But she called me by another name. She if I turn the compressor off. Called me by another name. She just falls off a little bit. So by reducing that dynamic range, we hear every word a little bit clearer. And it's only really engaging, as you can see, when he's hitting those latter words. So as we monitor the gain reduction here, name, name didn't even trigger you. it. And as he gets louder on that last note, as he gets louder, it compresses a little bit more. And as he lets off, it lets off a little bit. So it just makes it a little bit more consistent. And so everything is present and up front. And you can hear every word, adds a little bit of that warmth, that tone to his vocal. Sounds really good. Okay, let's jump over and talk about a very different style of compressor, a FET compressor. Now, where an opto compressor is a little bit slow and musical and warm, a FET compressor is extremely fast and a little bit aggressive sounding. So FET compressors are particularly good on things like drums, for example, things like guitar. Depending on the intensity of the song and the part, I also will often use a FET compressor on bass guitar and even on vocals if, it, if that's what the song calls for. We'll get to that in just a minute. We're gonna start by listening to uh, a FET compressor on this kick drum here. Now, the most famous version of an FET compressors is an 1176. This is Analog Obsession's version of a FET compressor. It's their FET-ish, FET-ish. And it's definitely emulating that 1176 style compression, but it looks a little bit different. So again, let's look at kind of a traditional style 1176 uh, display. So this is more or less what a hardware unit looks like in real life. It has an input knob, an output knob, an attack knob, a release knob, and it has ratio buttons. This over here is just the metering options. So these are ratio buttons, so determine your ratio here. And then the all button, which turns all the buttons in at the same time. Really interesting design. 
Now it's a little bit different on the fetish, but all the components are still there. So again, we're gonna ignore these features over here because they weren't built into the original components. All the pros don't have these on their physical units that they use that sound really great, so don't worry about it. We'll just ignore those because it simplifies these plugins immensely and still gives you a lot of power. Now, setting a 1176 style compressor is a little bit different because there's no threshold control. So instead of setting the threshold, you have a fixed threshold and then you change how much audio drives into it. So you turn up the audio into it until it hits the threshold and gives you the amount of gain reduction that you want over here. So here we have the same input output knobs. We have attack and release knobs. They're next to each other instead of on top of each other. And instead of the four buttons or five buttons, we have a ratio knob, which is kind of cool, a little bit different. So we have more control over what the ratio setting is. And then that all buttons in mode that I showed you is this slam button. So a little bit different. And then Analog Obsession did build in a tool on this plugin called a mix knob. And what a mix knob allows you to do is blend in uncompressed signal with compressed signal. Now, I didn't mention that on the optical compressor because I'm less likely to use it on an optical compressor. I'm more likely to use it in a setting like this where I'm using it to add an effect to the source. I'll show you that on a drum room sound in just a moment. Let's listen to this on a kick drum. And I'm gonna bypass it here using this bypass but button. Again, Analog Obsession builds in additional bypass buttons. So this bypasses. This also bypasses. So we'll just do it down here. Listen to this kick drum in the context of the mix and notice how every time I turn off the plugin, it just kind of disappears. You lose a lot of the impact from it in the mix. Kind of interesting right it just allows it to cut through a little bit more because what we're doing li listening in solo here we're making it really punchy so without it on it's kind of flat kind of flabby on really emphasizes that hit the reason is we're doing a kind of slow attack time now again effect compressor is extremely fast inherently so this is still a fairly fast attack time but it's going to come in right after he hits that initial kick hit so that hit pushes through then it turns down a little bit and then i set my release time to kind of hold while it's down in between hits so that it's really only emphasizing that initial hit right i set a pretty intense ratio and then we have the mix all the way up so again without this on a little bit flabby with it on super punchy same volume you just get more impact out of it in the context of your mix really cool and i'll show you how to set that in just one second on the drum rooms here so let's look at the drum rooms now here we're using it more as an effect so same plugin same kind of aggressive super fast tone but kind of crazy sounding right without this on very normal sound on very normal on crazy so we're using this to really bring out the in-betweens of these drum hits we're still getting some of the transient we're still letting some of the transient through but what we're doing is bringing up that room sound in between all of the hits so we're driving it really really hard let's bypass this plugin we'll put a whole new fetish on it and We'll just start from scratch. So again, we have a fixed threshold. So we're gonna be turning up the audio on the input to hit that threshold. So we'll turn this knob up until we start to see gain reduction. That's how we know it's engaging. And we can hear it now, right? If I bypass this now, it's lost a lot of volume. So we'll go and make up some volume. And let's scale up this ratio so it's really intense. Let's do that all buttons in style. We'll slam it, right? So this is mimicking that all buttons in. It's really crazy. We'll set a slightly slower attack time, a super fast release. And now it's really pumping, right? It's really, we can feel those hits hitting. And then let's use this parallel knob to mix in uncompressed signal. So if we go all the way to the left, it's uncompressed signal. All the way to the right is only compressed signal. So let's just mix in the compressed signal.
crazy, right? Okay, again, turning it off. And this is a really cool effect in the context of the mix here. Subtle, but just makes the drums feel huge. Okay, so that is effect compressor. We're gonna talk about it on vocals in just a minute at the end of this video. But first, we're gonna talk about VCA compressors. Now, VCA are the most transparent style of compression, typically. They are very, very subtle. They often have the most control. You can affect all the parameters. You've actually already seen a VCA compressor in this channel, if you watched the video last week, because the speed comp is a VCA compressor. So again, if you've already watched that video, I've already showed you how to set it. So I'm gonna spend a little less time talking about how to set it. But the Speed Comp by Analog Obsession is a great VCA compressor. Now here you have full control over all the functions of a VCA style compressor. These are really smooth, really transparent sounding. So you're not necessarily gonna notice the tone out of them, but what you can do is shape your sound with them. So in this case, in this guitar example, just a little reminder here, what I was going for, was just to tap down so the initial hit is just a little less intense and this compressor is containing that so that it's all a little bit more even. That way none of the hits get lost, none of them are too loud, everything is nice and even and smooth in the context of the mix. So we did it subtly on both of these guitars. But notice that there's just more presence. Right? So you could have done this with the FET too. Again, this is kind of an aggressive, kind of fast sound. But in this case, I was just going for something really transparent because this guitars already have a great tone. Just wanted to smooth them out a little bit. I also love to use VCA compressors on a lot of vocals. If I'm going for a really smooth vocal sound, I'll use VCA compressors to help tame some of those dynamics faster, right? Because they're not going to be as aggressive sounding as a FET compressor, for example. So I had the La La tapping down slow, nice musical compressor. And then I use the Speed Comp, a VCA style compressor on this lead vocal to catch all the big hits. So let's listen to this vocal again and just notice what kind of gain reduction we're doing here with this Speed Comp. She said I love you, but she called me by another name. She said I love you. So again, not very aggressive. We're only ever getting four-ish decibels of compression, but it's going to tap down and get a little bit more intense as he hits harder notes, notes harder. Uh, and it's also really fast, whereas the optical was slower this is going to engage and catch those initial hits a little bit better than the optical did. So this is catching those quick hits, it's releasing quickly, uh, and it's really transparent. But then if you notice, I actually have a FET compressor on here too. So what am I doing with three compressors on a vocal? Well, I'm using them all for different reasons intentionally, and none of them are doing too much work. They're all just serving a specific purpose. So the LALA, I use kind of like I would if I was recording a vocal in the real world and had a LA-2A style compressor. I'm just doing a little bit of uh, control on some of the louder notes. So again, look in here. She said I love you, just but she controlling the louder the notes, three decibels or so. Uh, then that's gonna be kind of a slower, warmer compression. Then I'm using the speed comp here to tap down really quickly. Another name. She said I love you. Now, sometimes I do speed comp into LALA, LA, LA, whatever you want to call it, uh, the VCA into the optical. And then in this case, for the vocal, that was mostly working for the entire song. Uh, it's just smoothing out the vocal, helping it sit uh, comfortably in the mix. She said I love you, but she called me by another name. She said I love you. But when I got to this last line in this bridge here, all those games that don't mind playing, but she almost had me stay. It's a little bit more intense. So I wanted to use a FET style compressor to match that intensity, right? Because if he just was really smooth right there, you'd lose that impact of his vocals. So what I'm doing here. All those games that don't mind playing, but she almost had me stay. 
is it's really slamming down on it with a super fast release. And what that's doing is it's kind of adding a little bit of punch into his vocals. So if we listen to this, the way I've set this up, if you hit A here, I've actually automated on the fetish bypass. So this is the bypass knob right here. I mentioned that they have a bypass built in. I just have it turn on right here. So it's on for most of the song because after I said I realized that it actually was helping the song cut through in some of the bigger sections. But in this context, it didn't fit with that really smooth elongated area. So I ended up turning it back off and just having it come back on as it's going into the end of the bridge. Re-engages. And then I'm just hitting it really hard uh, and I'm mixing that in so it's not even 100% of the mix. So I'm using that FET compressor to then add a little bit of energy back in. So then we go from a vocal, uh, we'll t if we turn all three of these off, we go from a vocal that sounded like this. All those games that don't mind playing, but she almost had me stay. Sounds fine, but it kind of gets buried at some points when he's kind of falling off words or when he's singing a word a little bit quieter. You add all three of them back in. All those games that don't mind playing, but she almost had me stay. Pretty cool, right? So three different types of compressors, all compressing, but they all operate a little bit differently, have a little bit different tone, and are best on different types of sources and for different types of reasons. So be sure to grab these, try them out, use them in your mixes. Let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments below. Have you used any of these compressors? Let me know in the comments below. I love all three of these. There's others that I think I'll review coming up here soon, but these are my main three right now. If there's any others that you want to see reviews on, let me know in the comments below. But before we go, I want to remind you, I have that completely free compression cheat sheet that walks through everything you really need to know about compression so that you can better understand, even if it looks a little bit different, you know what the different components going on behind the scenes of the compressor are, so you can tailor it to fit in your music. Now, it's completely free from the link in the description below, so be sure to grab that. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video.